Hey, it's Evan Brand here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm a certified nutritional therapist and personal trainer, and I specialize in using functional lab testing and nutrition and supplements to help people feel their best. Check out the podcast. There's thousands of hours of free content available back at the website below. But today we're talking about adrenal fatigue. Now, this is a common buzzword in the health community because so many people are struggling with it. So let's talk about what adrenal glands are before we talk about adrenal fatigue. So your adrenal glands are these walnut-sized glands that sit on top of the kidneys right back here, and they're responsible for helping you deal with stress. So that fight or flight mode, when someone cuts you off on the highway and you feel angry or you feel your heart racing, that is a sympathetic fight or flight response that is initiated by the adrenal glands that secrete various hormones. So you have the adrenal cortex, which is the center, and then you have the adrenal medulla that sits on the outside. Now, each different section of the adrenal gland secretes different hormones. So primarily, we're talking about the adrenal cortex, the core, which is gonna produce cortisol. Now, cortisol is a stress hormone. It's very helpful and it's necessary to get through life. Now, what happens with people with adrenal fatigue is that their cortisol first goes sky high because they're adapting to this stress. There's all these new inputs, whether it's environmental toxins, whether it's high intensity exercise, things like that, these things are going to elevate cortisol. But you can only jam the gas pedal in your car in first gear and go so fast. If you're doing 50 miles per hour and you're in first gear still, you're gonna blow an engine. You're gonna blow your gasket. So the body, this adrenal and thyroid connection is very real and I see it all the time. So people that are burning the candle at both ends, they're actually gonna slow down their adrenal function, they're gonna slow down their thyroid function which is gonna affect metabolism, energy levels, they're gonna be fatigued and have various symptoms because they're trying to push too hard and the body just says stop. At first it says slow down and then it says stop. 99% of people are in that slow down category. And the symptoms that come along with that are, number one, fatigue. This is how you're gonna feel. So you're gonna be tired in the morning even though you just got eight hours of sleep. You may also feel that in the evenings that you're wired and tired. So nine, 10, 11, hopefully you're going to bed before midnight. A lot of clients that when I first talk with them, they're not. They have to get slowly back down into a 10 p.m. or earlier bed schedule. These people try to lay down at night and they're not able to go to sleep. It's like the monkey mind just starts up racing. And that's typically because they have an inverse cortisol rhythm where cortisol is high in the evening and it's low in the morning. And you feel like crap. Number two, lightheadedness when standing. So have you ever been in your car, you're driving to work or the grocery store, you get out of your car, you shut the door, you stand up and you're ready to walk in and you realize, whoa, I'm about to pass out. That is a very, very common symptom of adrenal fatigue. And what's happening there is that the blood sugar is so low or your adrenal output, your cortisol levels are so low that you don't have enough fuel in the gas tank to basically respond to any type of stress, including standing and walking. Eventually, after a couple seconds, you come to and you feel a little bit better. People that don't, they typically have vertigo and that's a whole nother podcast topic or video. So, number three, cravings for sugar chocolate, caffeine. So you have that midday slump where cortisol and your blood sugar are both likely crashing. You're going to want to go for that candy bar. You're going to want to go for that dark chocolate, get that little boost of theobromine and naturally occurring caffeine in the dark chocolate, especially the high cacao content is going to be a little bit more potent, definitely better for your health, but it definitely is a symptom that you have some adrenal issues going on if you're always resorting to that. Lastly, Mood swings and irritability, this is very common. You go to your conventional doctor about this stuff and they're gonna say, hmm, you may be bipolar, let's run some tests on you. Or you may have generalized anxiety disorder and you're just always gonna be this way. Here's a prescription for Xanax and you take this once a day. Or here's a prescription for lorazepam or Valium. Or you're so tired, let's give you some Adderall or some other synthetic chemical that is very close to meth. If you look at the molecular structure of Adderall and compare that to meth, very similar, scary. Lightheadedness when standing, there's drugs for vertigo and things like that that people get put on. Cravings for sugar, chocolate, caffeine, who knows? Some of these people that have these symptoms might be overweight and the doctor may just say, hey, let's just do gastric bypass surgery on you and we'll fix you up. 
It's not the answer. So why does this happen? Well, blood sugar is the number one starting place for people with adrenal fatigue. So you've heard about intermittent fasting where you're trying to basically skip a meal and you're going to combine all of your eating into one, maybe not combine, but condense is the better word. You're gonna condense all of your eating into one small time window throughout the day. The rest of the time, you're basically fasting. This is okay and it has some benefits for certain people. However, in the modern world, there's so much stress coming in that you're gonna be depleting your fuel tank. You need that good nutrition back in your body to help support you. If you're on a vacation, that's a time where intermittent fasting might be okay. If you're sitting on top of a ledge and you have somebody fanning you with a banana leaf and you have just all this organic produce, you're just eating by the basket, it's in season, it's delicious, and you're just chilling, hanging out, that's a time where you could get away with intermittent fasting. But if you're working and you have kids and you have friends and spouses and girlfriends and obligations and things you need to do, you're constantly draining the tank and you need to replenish that with nutrition. And a lot of people skip meals too. So that's gonna cause blood sugar issues, which then causes the adrenals, kind of the backup squad, to boom, I'm gonna squirt out some cortisol and some adrenaline because I need to get that blood sugar back up or you're gonna pass out. So blood sugar goes high and then insulin has to come out and deal with that high blood sugar then you become insulin resistant. So now you're craving sugar, you're storing belly fat, and it just gets out of control. Number two, chronic stress. We've already talked about that a lot. That's emotional stress. If you're always fighting with someone, if you have physical stress that you're just not taking good care of your body, if you have nutritional stress, you're lacking these good omega-3 fatty acids, DHA, EPA, these are good fatty acids that you can get from krill oil, for example. I don't really prefer fish oil. Maybe I'll do a comparison video on why. So that's another type of stress, lacking these good fatty acids. Now, next, too much exercise, sugar, stimulants. I feel like I'm beating the drum here, but sugar really does wear out the organs of blood sugar regulation, the pancreas, the adrenals, and the liver, the PAL system, remember that. The stimulants, they do the same thing. Exercise, same thing. You can actually increase your cortisol levels through exercise, CrossFit, all the high intensity people out there. I have plenty of clients. I'm not anti-CrossFit, but I have so many clients that put themselves into adrenal fatigue because they're combining some of these strategies of intermittent fasting and all the latest fat burning techniques. You combine that with exercise and it really creates a recipe for disaster if the lifestyle and nutrition are not 100% dialed in. Harboring negativity. So if you're just watching news all the time, I mean, gosh, how often do you hear something good on the news? Hardly ever. Blood and violence and killing and sex and all that stuff sells. And that's not really positive. That's not something that you want to hear that's going to benefit your life. So I'm not saying you have to sell your TV like I've done, but it's definitely helpful to turn out and tune out to some of that negative media, whether it's coming through social media or actually watching the news. Next, Type A personality. I put this on here because I have a lot of clients that are working in startup companies where the demands are really high. Maybe they're a CEO of a company and they're trying to hustle and build this business on the side. They're working a day job. They have three kids, a wife. They have to come home and cook, things like that. Type A personalities, I've seen it so much. It almost directly correlates to people with adrenal fatigue. So what do we do about this? Well, first, you have to eat. Get a good breakfast in with about 30 grams of protein. So whether that's gonna be some good pasture-raised sausage from whether turkey, not too big of a fan of pork. If you can get a really good source, then that's gonna be okay. Beef, bison, any type of good meat that's gonna help give yourself some amino acids that's gonna fuel this whole system of the adrenals. If you want to do a little bit of berries in the morning, such as blueberries, and throw that in with some almond milk, some coconut oil, put that into a shake, just get some good fats in to help stabilize that blood sugar. That's gonna take some of the load off the adrenal glands. Number two, you wanna be able to adapt to stress. So I'm a firm believer in survival of the fittest, but I really think it shifted over the past 50 years or so to survival of the most adaptable. We're in a time of great change. Technology is changing our lives incredibly significantly. I mean, look, you're watching this video right now because of technology, so it's great. But also, we're plugged in more than ever and we're feeling the effects of being turned on 24-7. So you really need to be able to adapt to the modern way of life. 
How do you do that? Well, there's many different lifestyle strategies, but I'm talking specifically here about adaptogenic herbs. So one of my favorites is rhodiola and another is ashwagandha. These are two herbs that I use in my clients and as well as for my personal life and my wife as well for stress. It has, rhodiola has a mild antidepressant effect. It's also known as the golden root. Typically comes in about 500 milligram capsules. Ashwagandha typically comes in 500 milligrams. You definitely want to look for high quality organic when possible. That's something that can be used in the morning or the evening, ashwagandha, very helpful for insomnia, which also sleep issues are gonna mess up the adrenal glands. You really have to regulate your hormones using lifestyle strategies, turning down the lights at night, not looking at your iPhone, putting on some blue blocker glasses, using the app called Twilight on your phone if you use Android to make your phone have less blue light. These are all things that can help improve sleep quality, which will take the load off of the adrenal glands. Next. Vitamin C. Now we've already talked a little bit about adaptogenic herbs, but vitamin C is something that is found inside of the adrenal glands. So think of Fort Knox is to gold as the adrenal glands are to vitamin C. So vitamin C is going to get depleted. The kidneys are going to dump magnesium during times of excess stress. So getting minerals in like magnesium, getting vitamins in like vitamin C, don't just want to go and get ascorbic acid. You do not want to just do that. Vitamin C comes in many different forms in nature where you're going to have these citrus bioflavonoids, these naturally occurring compounds that are going to help vitamin C absorb. So if you look at the back of something like emergency, for example, I'm not a big fan because it's just ascorbic acid. And also I've seen that they've added some fructose and some other questionable compounds into the ingredients to make it taste good. I'm a much bigger fan of using a vitamin C complex that may have things like calcium ascorbate, magnesium ascorbate, and these different versions or analogs of vitamin C, making sure that you have sort of a broad spectrum. Number four, what do you do? Test them. It's hard to actually quantify and qualify. Do you have adrenal fatigue? I mean, you can definitely go off how you feel. If you're doing some of these things, you can definitely probably put the puzzle pieces together and assume that you have some issues going on. Nine times out of 10, when I run a adrenal stress profile on someone where you're spitting into four different tubes at different times during the day to track your 24 hour levels, you wanna be here and you wanna go down during the day most people are here and they're low all day, so they're exhausted in the morning, they're exhausted in the evening. That's how most people are when I run that test, but you really can't get a good treatment plan going and you really can't tell yourself, yes, I have adrenal fatigue if you don't test for it. So that is something that I do in my clinic. I highly recommend you get a test, if not through myself, find some other type of functional medicine practitioner that is able to order this test for you and you definitely want to have a good program outlined for you. So if you don't feel comfortable with what someone has told you about this, definitely take some of these things into consideration. There's also an article that I'll link below on my website. It's been shared over 2,000 times, one of the most popular articles on some more supplementary and lifestyle measures that I just can't fit onto this whiteboard that you will benefit from in your recovery have hope, you will get your energy back, you will burn your fat, you just gotta get this stuff straightened out. So this is Evan Brand signing out and I'll talk to you in the next one, bye.